Welcome to this video on functions. In this video we're going to learn about function notation and some of the terminology that goes with function notation such as inputs and outputs. We're going to use function notation with an applied problem and then we're going to practice using function notation with more complicated inputs. First of all, let's talk about the definition of a function. A function is a relationship that assigns exactly one output to each input. So for example, if we have a barcode on an item that we're purchasing, we scan that barcode and then we come up with the price of the actual item. This is an example of a function. So our input is our barcode and then the output is the price of that item. So we wouldn't want, if we scan a barcode one time, to get uh, maybe a price of $2.34 the first time you scan it, and the second time you scan it, maybe $3.75. We wouldn't want that to happen. With functions, we want to make sure that for each input, there's only one output. We can't have the situation where we have two different outputs. When we use functions, we often like to use function notation. Function notation is something that's written in this form, where we have f of x, that's how that's written, equals something over here, which is our rule for our function. This part here is our input, and over here, this is our output. So if we had, we were supposed to do, say, f of 3, here 3 is the input. The rule tells us how we have to evaluate our function or how we have to find our output. We take 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 5, so that would equal 9 minus 9 plus 5, or 5, and the 5 here, this would be our output or the simplified version of our output. Let's look at an example of a function that's associated with an applied problem. The revenue generated by selling surfboards at a price of p dollars is given by r of p equals 300p minus 2p squared. So here our input is our p and the output is that revenue. So p is our input and this is in dollars and the output this is our r of p or our revenue and the output of our revenue is also dollars the last thing that we're supposed to do is find and interpret r of 60 so when we say interpret that means we're supposed to write a sentence that goes with this problem so let's first find r of 60 so r of 60 is going to be 300 times 60 minus 2 times 60 squared. If I finish up this calculation, 300 times 60, that's going to be 18,000. And 2 times 60 squared, that's 7,200. So this is going to give me 10,800. So let's write the sentence that goes with this. So we need to tell what the input, the input is at 60, and what the output, the 10,800, mean in the context of this problem. Our input is 60, so we could say when the price is $60 per surfboard, let's say, the revenue is $10,800. Now let's look at practicing using function notation. So our function here is f of x equals 2x squared minus x plus 4. So this part here, this is the rule for our function. And we need to find f of negative 1. So if we're trying to find f of negative 1, what I need to do is plug in negative 1 every time I see an x. So I'm going to have 2 times negative 1 squared minus negative 1 plus 4. Now notice here I stuck that negative 1 inside a set of parentheses which wasn't part of my original function but if I have more than one thing or more than one character here like negative 1 like if I'm trying to plug in a negative number or I'm trying to plug in 2m 
it's going to really be helpful to put parentheses around wherever you see an x. So we have 2 times 1. This minus and a minus gives us plus 1 plus 4 equals 2 plus 1 plus 4, so that is 7. So our function is, or our output here is 7, so we have f of negative 1 is 7. In this next one, we need to plug in 2m. So once again, wherever I see an x up here, I'm going to put a set of parentheses. So in a sense, I could do this. 2, I'm going to open a set of parentheses, square it, minus, open another set of parentheses, plus 4. So wherever I saw an x, I had a set of parentheses. And then I'm going to plug in 2m into each of those spots. If we continue, we're going to have 2 times 2m squared, so I need to square the 2 and the m, So I, or in a sense I'm doing 2m times 2m minus 2m plus 4. So if I multiply all those 2's, I'm going to have 8m squared minus 2m plus 4. So let's do f of 3x. So once again, so again, wherever I see an x, I'm going to open an empty set of parentheses. And this time, in those parentheses, I am going to put a 3x in there. So I have 2 times, so this would be 3x times 3x, or the other way you can think about this is we have to square the 3 and we have to square the x. So 3 squared is 9, and then we have x squared minus 3x plus 4 equals 18x squared minus 3x plus 4. Let's continue with that same function, but do a couple more types of input evaluations. So we're going to use the same idea here as we did in the few previous few problems. Wherever I see an x here, I'm going to open a set of parentheses. So I have 2 times x squared minus x plus 4, and inside these set of parentheses, this time my input is x plus h, so I'm going to have an x plus h. Now this can be a little tricky, so we're going to write out a, a, an extra step here. So I'm going to have 2, and I'm going to have x plus h times x plus h. Notice how I went ahead and wrote out those factors of x plus h side by side. That will help me remember to FOIL here and to, to do that FOILing correctly. So let's go ahead and finish this part over here. So if I distribute this negative, I'm going to have minus x minus h plus 4. So here, FOILing, I'm going to have x squared plus xh plus xh plus h squared minus x minus h plus 4. And finally, distributing this last two, I'm going to have 2x squared. Let's see, I can combine those two. So that would be 2xh times 2, so that's plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus x minus h plus 4. Okay, so now let's look at this next one. So this time, I've, I've got a lot of this similar things going on, but I'm doing two function evaluations. So here I have f of x plus h, and here I have f of x. So I need to plug in, use my function, two separate times. Now this thing right here, this f of x plus h, we just found that. That's right there. So let's use that so that we don't have to redo the work. So I'm going to have 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus x minus h plus 4. That's my f of x plus h. And then I need to subtract off f of x. So f of x is this thing up here. 
this is my rule for f of x. So I'm going to put that right here, 2x squared minus x plus 4. So let's simplify here. We're going to have 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus x minus h plus 4 minus, and I need to distribute this negative sign across all three terms, minus 2x squared plus x minus 4. Now if you notice, when we go to simplify here, I have a 2x squared here and a negative 2x squared here, so those 2x squareds cancel out. Also, I have a negative x here and a positive x here, so those cancel out, and we have positive 4 and negative 4, those cancel, and so we really only have three terms left. So I have 4xh plus 2h squared minus h. Now, in this last part of this problem, we're supposed to find f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So we're making, we're, we're using this part from this previous problem as our numerator. So I'm going to put 4xh plus 2h squared minus h divided by h. So notice I didn't have to redo all this work. All I did was I used what we have right there. Now we need to simplify here. Notice how each term in my numerator has an h. So I can factor out an h and then I have 4x plus 2h minus, and if I factor out an h out of this term, I have a placeholder of 1 divided by h, and these h's will now cancel, and so I'm just left with 4x plus 2h minus 1. Now this thing here is a really important um, quantity. It's called the difference quotient, and it comes up a lot in calculus, and so you need to be really adept at doing these these simplifications so that when it comes up in calculus you, you have that skill down. So that's it for this video. Hope you found it helpful.